power of Bitcoin. Bitcoin hits a new high, briefly touching $8,100 over the weekend. A new all-time high as the cryptocurrency moves closer to the mainstream. We are gearing up for the busiest shopping day of the year, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. How far off are we from swapping our credit cards for Bitcoins? Joining us right now is Overstock.com founder and CEO Patrick Byrne. Patrick, it's always a pleasure to see you. Maria, always my honor to be on. Well, you, you were here telling us how great Bitcoin is and that you should just stop with all of the negativity out there. What's going on? I mean, are you not worried to see this sort of like in bubble territory, which some people would say, $8,100? <laughs> you think that's a bubble. What do you think this fiat currency you carry around in your purse is? This, this dollar stuff is just some fiat currency based on debt uh, based, based on, on fractional reserve based on the trust of the u.s government you mean based on the based on the based trust on of the, the treasury based on the surplus taxing authority of the u.s treasury of which i assert there is zero it's based on nothing it's fractional reserve banking keynesian magic money tree garbage money it's about you time the world switches <laughs> it's about time the world switches to real money either gold or some cryptocurrency like bitcoin you Pat saying Patrick, that when, when people are out shopping for the holidays over the next few weeks they're going to be using dollars and not bitcoin so right. on, on what basis do you have this optimism for, for bitcoin when people aren't i mean the, the, a currency is only as good as people's use of it to exchange goods and services and where do you see that happening on the Bitcoin front? Well, for now, you know, it's an oddity. It's about 0.2%, 0.25% of our sales. It's a real oddity. Very few people use it. Turns out a lot of people who buy it uh, just buy it and hold it. They, what, what they, they have a, a name for them. They just buy and hold it because they know it's, you know, every... It's if called you go and speculation. Buy it, well, no, they buy it and hold it because they, they think it's going to get... Well, the... They don't want to use it as currency yet because they think any time someone the first time someone bought first time somebody bought something with Bitcoin, they spent 10,000 Bitcoin on a pizza. It was about five dollars worth of Bitcoin back then. And today that would have been an 80 million dollar pizza. So people do hold it. But I think someday that it's really what, what's happened in other countries is the adoption goes up when the fiat currency collapses. So if you ever see a dollar crisis and the U.S. dollar ever collapses, that's when you'll really see Bitcoin But emerges. see, the one thing that, Patrick, people never talk about is the dollar is backed, in essence, by hard assets. It's backed by our gold reserves. It's backed by the land that the United States owns. The, we, we have a lot of hard assets that, in part, back our currency. However... There's two other things to know about it. When we uh, that it's it's really backed by the taxing authority of the Treasury, but I would assert the tax that the U.S. Treasury has maxed its taxing authority, which is why we run these deficits. If they could have more to tax, they would. You know, when uh, Janet Yellen a few years ago, every month she signs a piece of paper, and. 85 billion new dollars were created. I'd love to talk about the metaphysical property of that garbage versus at least something that is, yeah, it's, it's imaginary, but it's at least limited by the laws of mathematics. There's a limit on how much the Bitcoin reason that, can ever the be reason created. This, the, reason these, Patrick, the reason these arguments don't resonate with people because it always comes across as if people who believe in Bitcoin are back Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies are trying to create fear among people about our very currency and are trying to start a run on it. I think they're trying to create awareness of what we have. 104 years ago, we adopted a very strange model of money that says the banking that will have a central bank, which incidentally has a very special checking account with zero in it, but by law, nothing, it, nothing, no check can ever bounce. Right. So they can buy, it, there's this, this crab nebula, so to speak, in astronomical terms, of the entire financial system is a magic checking account that can never be over, o, overdrawn. You tell me a system that's balanced on that, multiplied by leverage and fractional reserve banking and Keynesian spending, deficit spending, is actually has a stronger metaphysical reality to you than something that's actually Patrick, governed by the laws of mathematics? Well, you, you talk about when currencies collapse in other countries. Well, what happens is people go out 
and buy dollars when currencies collapse in other current in other countries. And, in fact, and where are they going to go was, when they when there was a financial crisis uh, ten years ago? People went out and bought U.S. Treasury bonds. So you know, you talk about the metaphysical, but when people are actually taking action, they want dollars in, in countries with no stable currency like Iraq, for instance. The the hundred dollar bill is one of the most valuable assets you can get your hands on. Of course, the United States has had this incredible edge since World War II. Our currency is the reserve currency. We get to print what the world currently accepts as the, a reserve currency. Well, maybe that maybe that's not uh, going to last forever. You know, the, uh, in the long term, the value of all fiat currency has gone to zero. But there all aren't even enough of them. I mean, how many for... how many bitcoins are there? There's a limit to how many are actually even in circulation. Well, there's 22 million theoretically possible. It'll take us until 2050 to get there. There's about 12 or 13 million in circulation now, but they're divisible up down to a millionth of a slice. So it's so. So how's uh, it working for you? Overstock was the first major online retailer to accept bitcoins. It's still among a handful of companies that are actually using it. Expedia, Dish Network, uh, also using the Fold app. You can use Bitcoin to pay for Starbucks. How, how's it going using it, uh, going into Black Friday? Uh, you're going to have a problem if, you have, if, if you're really busy and too many people are using Bitcoin to buy things on Friday? No, it's, uh, we, we won't have a problem. It works just fine. How are you preparing for it? Well, we, we're, we, we, we stress test our systems. We just finished uh, a couple weeks ago stress testing our systems for Christmas. All, all systems go. And uh, b believe me, we can take all the Bitcoin that, uh, that people have to spend. Our systems will handle. We intend, I expect you'll see us next year start giving a 2% rebate for anyone who spends in Bitcoin. What, what percent of your sales are happening in Bitcoin? Very tiny, a quarter of 1% now. So okay. I, I've got a question because you said, you said this is all imaginary. You've got $8,100 as the price for it as of Sunday. And you don't think this is a bubble. What's it based on? It's so philosophical, and I'm not really sure that. How, how can you say it's not a bubble if we don't understand what, what it is? Because the real question is not how high can Bitcoin go. The real question is how low can fiat currency go? And at the end of the day, all fiat currencies through the centuries have gone to zero. And that's because they end up with irresponsible money printing such as our government's been involved in for three decades well so look at but but look at the pound as an example the british the bank of england you know has been in existence for centuries and the pound is still a very viable global i mean it, it isn't the 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 cent the reserve currency of the world like it used to be but people are doing lots of business in london with the pound every single day so that hasn't Silver, gone to uh, zero. The dollar well, hasn't gone to zero. We're, I don't understand the zeros you're talking about. Well, uh, 80 to 100 years ago, one, uh, it took you $35 to buy one ounce of gold. Now it takes you $1,200 uh, and 800 pounds to buy an ounce of gold. So wouldn't you say that the, that the gold has gone up and the dollar and the pound have collapsed against the gold? They have collapsed. But because all the fiat but, currencies in the world are all tied to each other, but gold they isn't relevant in our in our lives. We spend we spend as much money every year on dry cleaning as we spend on gold. It's just not a, a relevant. That's a non sequitur. That's a, that's not the main event. The main event is we have all these currencies since Bretton Woods fluctuating against each other, and maybe dollar hasn't gone to zero against these other currencies, but all of them have gone. You know, down 95 percent the dollar has in the last century versus right. uh, something that they can't control, like gold, something with a limited supply, like gold or Bitcoin. Well, we'll so have, Bitcoin yeah. may be on its way Wait, to a million. No, you're, you know. you're saying that there's been inflation, but that's true. But it's also the case that our wages are going up every year. So the real purchasing power of you know of purple of, of a person's time is going up in keeping with uh, with inflation. With, Real well, incomes that, that, are still rising, so this inflation, it's, it's also a figment of the imagination. Well, those, go, I'm sorry, now, Maria. We, we, will, we will see where this goes in terms of that. I mean, you got people like Jamie Dimon, a serious guy, calling it a fraud. Um, calling it a fraud? And, you mean like those hundreds of, of billions of dollars of securities that Jamie Dimon sold the public a decade ago called mortgage-backed securities? Mm. He's calling Bitcoin a fraud? 
Is that going to go to zero like his securities that he sold the public go to zero? Well, the, the CME is obviously uh, making room for it and, and, and going to be uh, trading it. Patrick, let me ask you before you go, we're going into Black Friday. What does it look like in terms of <laughs> orders, in terms of your expectations for shopping? Because we're good, talking all morning looks that there are sale, the sales have begun. That, that can't be good news. Uh, well, the uh, looks good. Looks like a strong holiday season. Internet shopping is, of course, here to stay. It's 10 percent of retail, but everybody it's there's just this long secular shift from brick and mortar to retail. Although I've said repeatedly for a couple of years, I think the gods of economics think the right model is brick and click. And I even mentioned in our last earnings call, we actually engaged Guggenheim to explore alternatives, because I think that the right thing for Overstock is to become part of a brick and click, whether we acquire or somebody acquires Overstock. So we have that process going. So are you basically on the block then? Not well, we're shopping or on the block or looking for a strategic investor. You know, we've done everything we've done, having burned one hundred and sixty million dollars of capital in our lifetime. We're up against people who burn a billion. 200 million a year, one competitor, and nobody yeah. seems to care. So we're taking it, we're looking either for a big strategic investor or I really want to focus on these blockchain things. And who, who, would right be, thing, who would be your ideal investor right now? Who, who would be your partner? There are a number of, there are a number of brick and mortars who feel that Wall Street uh, or who Wall Street feels don't have as strong a digital strategy as they should. With our, with our, we're, we'd be a perfect hybridization with one of them. Or there are some other, there are some companies, everyone in boardrooms across America see themselves getting disrupted by Amazon. Yeah. A lot of them are brick and mortar companies, some of them are logistics companies. Very soon you're going to be giving packages to Amazon to deliver on the other side of the country. So for a lot of different kinds yeah. of companies, Overstock's an incredible solution. All right, we will leave it there. Patrick, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much.